What is up, brothers and sisters? Welcome to the Mitch Gray Show. Another great episode uh, ready for you today. I've been waiting on this episode for a while now, and I'm so excited, so, so excited. Uh, first of all, friends, I hope you're doing great. I hope you're making it uh, through this time of interesting uncertainty. I hope you're getting to get back to normal a little bit or creating uh, the type of normal you want. So, uh, on today's show, I have another new friend that um, I've known of for a while. We don't know each other hardly at all. We've, in fact, just met, uh, but I've known he's existed in the world, um, and he represents a company that I'm really, really excited to visit about. So today we've got Ben Parker from Teton Guitars. Ben, welcome to the Mitch Gray Show. Hey, thanks for having me on and being able to work me in. I know we kind of, we've gone back and forth on a oh, I, I can meet this time, cool, and then something comes up, and we it's been a few weeks or month or so trying to get this worked out, but I'm excited to be here. Yes, and, and please don't feel bad, because that's pretty much been how it is with every guest, and so, yeah. <laughs> especially the last couple of months. This has just been such a strange time, and so, yeah, oh, I'm, so, I'm excited. It's so weird. Yeah. yeah. Ex- so, how, first of all, I've asked everyone during this time, how are you, your family, everyone's good? What does that look like? Uh, yeah, um, we're good. Uh, just hanging out, you know, my kids, uh, they've been out of school for two months, maybe longer now. Right. This, and this, uh, actually this week is like their last like week where they can make up assignments they've missed and stuff like that. So they've, uh, they're kind of done Yeah. and they're like, Hey, summer's here. And we're like, well, it's kind of been here (laughs) for a few months so it's just a really long summer except the weather is nice now you know the beginning of the two months we still had snow and stuff here so yeah uh, it's nice yeah so um how was did you have to do the whole parent homeschooling thing how was that transition um my wife uh handled most of it Mm -hmm. uh and she did okay Uh, the teacher's uh, for both kids that are, well, and I have a, I have three kids. Right. So the two that are in grade school, um, their teachers like always had stuff for them to work on every day, which was really cool. Um, and my youngest, he's in preschool and his preschool teacher every two weeks would just send home a packet of stuff. Oh, nice. Um, so it was mostly just like, uh, being like, come on, get it done. Let's get it done. Cause they had, they had plenty of stuff to work on. Right. It was just, you know, they wanted to, you know, go play or uh, they're always like to all the time, let's play video games. Let us play video games. Right, or like, right. no, you can't just sit around all day playing video games, you know? <laughs> and that was at the beginning, that was really hard because there's, they're just stuck in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, once it got nice outside though, you know, they just like disappeared outside for hours and hours on end, which was great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you survived the transition, and now you're kind of officially into summer, so, so or close to it, I guess. Yeah, we had uh, snow this last weekend, wow. so wow. that was really disheartening because it's been a long, long winter here. <laughs> I think we're about eight months into winter, right? But this week's supposed to be almost ninety wow. over the weekend, yeah. so we're kind of just like uh, spring is like a four-day spring. Right. Right. which as long as it gets to be summer, I don't care. Like I'm so ready for summer. I'm ready for sun. Yeah. I want to go out and do stuff, yeah. get some hikes in and stuff like that. So. Yes. yes. And your 90 is like a mountain thin air 90, right? Not a dry, miserable 90. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Like people around here always complain about it. I'm from Arizona. Oh, that's nothing to you. And there. so, yeah, 90 is, like I always like 90 cause everyone, they don't go and do anything when it's 90 here. So like whatever I want to go do, it's just like wide open. Just go, yeah, yeah. you know, I want to go play golf, which I don't ever really do. Right. Like 90 degree days are probably awesome cause I doubt that? anyone else is out there playing. Right. So. Right. right. Awesome. So tell us about Teton Guitars. Um, I'll get on my soapbox in a minute, but, uh, and, and about the parent company, tell us, that's kind of who you work with and um, kind of the reason you're on the show is because I was trying to get another 
uh, Representative Jen on the show, and that didn't work out. So yeah, tell the listeners a little bit about what you guys have going, um, what you're about, uh, what you're excited about, and and we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, Teton Guitars is owned by Chesbro Music Company. Uh, Chesbro has been around for uh, a long time, 108 years. Wow. They started in 1911, um, and uh, Teton has been around for 10 years. This is our 10th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, we received our first shipment of guitars in late October of 2010. Mm -hmm. So um, we, uh, our goal for Teton, I guess, is we want to make the best guitar that just everyone can play. Yeah. So we have price points, you know, most shops you'll see stuff kind of like two, uh, two fifty ish range, uh, all the way up to about a thousand dollars. Like, and we hit, we hit multiple, uh, price points within that. Um, but that's just like, you know, a, a beginner can pick up our guitar and it's, they're really nice. They sound great. They play really well, which is everything a beginner needs to actually stick with an instrument. Yes. Um, and then our higher end stuff, uh, like guys are out playing it on the road. Um, and they're nice, like guys who do a lot of, uh, weekend like warrior stuff gigging uh they don't want to take their two and three thousand dollar guitars into some places where they play regularly right, right. And, but you know a 500 hundred dollar teton sounds just as good and uh the investment isn't as high you know or, the, or i guess the liability isn't as high so you know we tons of those guys are playing the guitar uh, and that's just, that was our goal. We wanted people to have like a professional high quality instrument and that every musician would be able to afford. So that's what we set out to do. And I think, I think we've done it. I think it's worked really well for us. Yes. I, uh, I can vouch for you. I, I bought, I guess I bought a Teton. Um, I guess it's been about five years ago, actually. Uh, I, I discovered them at a music shop in Santa Fe. We were actually on tour. And when we go on tour, we like to find cool little music shops in different oh, cool. cities. And we were in Santa Fe, New Mexico, one of my favorite cities. Um, and at this little music shop we found, and they had a couple of Tetons in stock. I think they had two, in fact. And okay. We like, what, what is this? And so we picked yeah. it up and played it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I fell in love from the jump. I fell in love. And so... Uh, a couple months after that, I was like, yeah, I'm going to invest some money in this. Well, I called that shop back, and they had they had sold those two that they had an in inventory. And one of them was the a, uh, of the AR series, the armrest series. And, oh, okay. Uh, I had never played a guitar with an armrest before, and I will never play a guitar yeah, yeah. without it moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> and so... I had to I had to sneak around. I'm based in New Mexico, and there was no one close to me at the time selling uh, Teton guitars. And so I think I ended mm -hmm. up having to order mine out of like, I don't know, Kansas, I don't know, somewhere away, pretty, you know, quite a ways off. And, um, and so, yeah, it was over. I, I put my $2,500 Yamaha down and I've played that Teton ever since. And so, cool. uh, it, yeah, it's a great guitar. And I'm kind of that guy, you know, we, we would play, Oh, anywhere from 60 to 80 shows a year, but all of them were on weekends. And so we would go out and play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. Yeah. And you're talking four hour shows every single night. And that, yeah. that Teton was the first guitar that I played that at the end of that on Monday morning, my, my left hand just wasn't dying from, from <laughs> cording and playing and everything. And uh, yeah, cool. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I've been a fan since day one. And if anyone's listening to us and is a guitar player, please go check them out because they're a great price, great value, great sound, great, great, great sound. Um, and so, yeah, so thank you for making a product that is uh, worth it. Um, it's, it's, you know, music is a world that it's sometimes hard to find value in 
often, especially when you're buying equipment. Um, yeah. And you guys have definitely made a product that has crazy value. So good job. Good job. Well, it's awesome to hear. That's the goal. You yeah. know, we want to, uh, guys like you, that's, that's really what we set out to uh, make something that worked. You know, you probably just weren't, you know, you didn't have all this money to just throw around at everything, right. you know? So right. Right. Uh, I know I don't. Yeah. And I, I did that for a lot of years, just out gigging. And when I found like an awesome four or $500 guitar, it was like, you know, the best feeling in the world. I was like, I can actually afford this. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> Without putting it on layaway or <laughs> yeah, selling other equipment to buy it. Yeah, that seems to be yep. a thing too. Um, oh, yeah. No, it's just, it's it's a comfortable, and we won't, listeners, we won't talk about guitars the whole time, I promise. But it should, <laughs> or we might. It's just, a, <laughs> it's just a really comfortable, um, especially with that armrest, man. That is uh that is and for those that, that don't play guitar that are listening to us and you're like i have no idea what these guys are talking about so the edges on most acoustic guitars are square because that well that, that it's a round body but the edges are just squared off that's kind of the traditional way to mm -hmm. make them and so at some point someone came up with the idea that the, the side and the top of the body that you lean your arm over if we round that off a little bit it's much more comfortable to play um, mm -hmm. and that's what we mean when we say kind of the armrest ideas, it's actually a nice, and that's why I actually call Teton, a, a, a poor man's boutique, uh, guitar, because it really does have more of a boutique, uh, you know, 2,500 to $3,000 feel and action. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not, I mean, it's, it's five, six, seven, eight hundred, you know, thousand dollars. And I think that's what's really set you guys apart. Um, from other brands is you've given that boutique feel and look without yeah. the, the boutique price. And so um, let's, let's go there. How does that work? Let's just dive into guitar nerd nerdness real quick. How, okay. how are you able to kind of get that? Because I've had other musicians tell me the same that have never heard Teton and they see mine on the road and it's like, wow, that's a really sharp, nice sounding guitar. How much was it? And I tell them, I think mine was like 800 or something and they're just blown away. They're like, there's no way. And so how do you get yeah. from, from a design engineering cost perspective, how do you get that boutique look and sound and, and are able to price it fairly? Uh, well, the guitars are made in China, so that always helps with pricing. Yeah. Um, but the awesome thing about uh, where the factory we work with, it's a really small. Mm. Like I've worked with Chinese factories for a long, long time. And there's some that if you're not making like 40,000 guitars a month, they don't even talk to you. Wow. And you have to be making double that to even make like any custom stuff. Right. Otherwise, it's kind of real cookie cutter. You know, this here's what you're getting right. for, for your order. Uh, so we have a really small factory. Um, and they're really forward thinking. They want to be innovative. Uh, I send them crazy ideas. <laughs> Like I'll, you know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, I write something down or put it in my phone real quick. And I'm like, I have to remember this because uh, this is just nuts. And if I, if I'm not, uh, I won't remember it again because right. it's so crazy. Right. Uh, so I do that a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I always talk to the same lady from the factory and I'll uh, you know, I send her, shoot her a text message or an email or, you know, whatever. And I'm sometimes in the middle of the night, cause they're obviously up. I'm like, uh, this just popped in my brain. What do you think? <laughs> and she's like, let me go, let me go talk to one of the managers, you know, and she'll come back a little bit later and be like, they think they could do it. I'm like, Oh, let's, <laughs> Let's see. And so, you know, if, you know, a week or two later, I'll get pictures of them kind of experimenting on their end right. with ideas I've given them and stuff like that. So, uh, kind of the, the armrest was part of that, yeah. um, process. Just, we worked on that probably about a year and a half before two things happened. We got it where it was like, Oh, this is mm -hmm. because it's, you know, it's right here on your arm. Mm -hmm. That's where it makes the difference is like this little two inch area of your arm. Yes. But that two inch area of your arm is whenever you get smacked right there. And that, that's what makes your whole arm go dead. Go you know? numb. Yes. So, so it's really, uh, 
it's really important area of your arm, yeah. uh, comfort wise. So we wanted to make sure, uh, it was in the right spot. It was shaped the right way, you know, and there's other companies, boutique companies have, that have done it, uh, long before we did it. So we had some examples, right? You know, we could say, Hey, uh, if you see and see so-and-so, if you see one of their guitars with that beveled edge, mm-hmm. let's see what it feels like. So, you know, we kind of experimented with what other people were doing, mm-hmm. found one that worked for us. Then the other thing was pricing. Right. Like my first few models, I'm like, if it has an armrest, it has to be an all solid instrument. Like, because that's what these really high end guitars are. Ah, gotcha. Yes. Um, so we, we got in this, the first ones we got in were solid spruce top, solid rosewood back and sides. And they felt nice. The first, like, kind of like a uh, little mini production of them came in great, except they were like, they would have been like $1,500. Right. right. Which were like, that's not who we are. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not our goal is to make that guitar. Mm-hmm. Our goal is to make that guitar, but have it be $750. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we switched it over to the layered back and sides. Uh, we took off some of the, uh, you know, we put some extra appointments on it because, well, if it's going to be $1,500, it has to be look like a $1,500 guitar. So we took off some of those things right. and, you know, that got us down that original one that probably came out about the time you got yours. I think it was seven ninety nine for that that original one. And we've done some things since then that have actually brought the price down a little bit more anyways, which we, we had to do. Rosewood um, became regulated in a different way through the CITES organization. Oh, wow. Hmm. So uh, we had to move away from a lot of the Rosewood product right? Um, just because it became super expensive, yeah. Yeah. you know, because there's all these extra permits and you know, moving it across borders uh, required like proof of all the way back to the cutting process and all this stuff, oh, wow. which we had. We always got that stuff, uh, and it wasn't an issue. It was just expensive. Uh, so we switched over to uh, Ebony a couple of years ago, and that helped us lower the price because there wasn't all of this stuff happening to get rosewood into the country right so um i i don't quite off the top of my head i don't remember what they are now i should i mean that's what i do all day (laughs) (laughs) so so i want to go back a little bit um you you mentioned that one the, the one of the major reasons you can keep the cost down is because of your partnership with the factory in china Mm-hmm. With everything that's happening, how has that impacted you guys? Is it going to impact? Is it going to change things moving forward? What is? What is? Do you know what that looks like? Um, not right now, because uh, when it really hit them, and the factory that we work with isn't anywhere near the epicenters that we're seeing in in uh, China. Gotcha. Their their art. The factory we work with is pretty far south. And they they haven't had the issues. Yeah. They uh. So, um, they just finished a production up, kind of before the government said the country's shutting down, and actually the factory like worked really hard. They saw it coming. They worked really hard to get it on boats and stuff and get out of there before oh. everything shut down. So we got a production in. Um, and then this type of year, we always kind of take a break with productions anyways, because there's Chinese new year, right? right. Which is about, you lose about a month of, uh, productivity over there during Chinese new year and production opportunity. And then they extended Chinese new year, like a whole nother month for most places, you know? Um, and the factory is really, you know, they're small, they're family owned, they're really family centric. Like they kind of just told their people, don't rush back. Like this is our slow season anyways. Like no one's going to be sending us orders. Right. So they really worried about their people first. 
and that's fine because we weren't doing anything with them and uh that's and they they knew that was going to happen anyways because of our production schedule that we've had for years with them yeah yeah um so it we didn't see much on their end um as far as here like they've started production they have stuff going you know uh i expect you know stuff to start arriving here the end of middle to end of june right uh which is kind of you know we're getting past our end of it so for us we had a really probably an optimal schedule <laughs> um where this big block of time where kind of everything froze up and and all this strangeness happened. I don't know what else to call it. Right. This chunk of time, you know, we didn't really have much going on there anyways. On our end, we weren't needing anything because we just got stuff from them. Right. So we had good inventory, which has actually been really nice. Like, uh, we've had tons of stores calling us, and they're like, you guys have guitars? And we're like, oh, yeah, we've got a warehouse full of guitars. We're great. We're right. And so we're getting all these new stores that, have run into other companies who have had issues because they had different timing than we had. Yes. Um, and no one could see this coming. It's not like it's anyone's fault that right. this happened, you know, or they were not prepared or whatever. It's just total uh, fluke or yeah. <laughs> whatever you want to say. Uh, but they, but we were lucky and they weren't as lucky, I guess, is all it comes down to. So we got a lot of calls for guitars from places that we hadn't really done much business with before. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like you, you guys were already by nature set up for this timing and, um, yeah. other retailers probably weren't. And so that's, <laughs> that is pretty interesting. Um, and yeah. how, how cool is it that y'all, y'all can, um, I, I know just in dealing with your with with Teton over the last you know three or four or five years, um, it's a very family centric company, a very a, you know smaller company, um, mm -hmm. and so it's really cool that you get to partner with an, an, a production operation that kind of have have a lot of the same probably values and oh, how yeah. they want to be represented and you know alignment in my opinion is everything. Um, mm -hmm. if, if something is misaligned, it can screw everything up. If something is perfectly aligned, you can perform better than you ever dreamt or imagined, and so uh, yeah, that's that's a really special thing, and that and that's something that I could tell uh, when I first kind of started engaging with Teton was that that alignment. I was like, yeah, this is a company that you really want to be aligned with, um, and it just makes sense. And so, so how how in the world did you get into uh, the guitar business was it was it something you've always wanted to do was it just a job did it kind of fall into your lap what did, what is uh, um it just it, was, it kind of showed up one day uh i have a psychology degree and i was doing okay. social work <laughs> right uh and i was really like struggling with it yeah. uh i have i had a hard time um just getting home in the evening and being done with it mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, you know, with m any mental health work, there's uh, suicides and stuff like that that happen. Yeah. And I just gone through some of those and was kind of really questioning, am I going to be able to keep doing this or not? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was playing in a band at the time and the other guitar player was like, hey, my work, you know, they're looking for some help. And I'm like, well... I, I'm probably looking for something else because he could see that I was just kind of miserable and uh, needed needed something else. So uh, it turned out that you know they needed at the time they needed a salesperson. Ah. So I went in and just started doing sales for them and stuff like that. And you know, a few months later, they're like, "Hey, we need a product guy." So I moved over to product and. Oh, we need, you know, something else. So I'd move over and do something else. So I've, I've done all kinds of stuff. I've been there 12 years now and, uh, or 11, 12 years, been there 12 years. So I've worked kind of all over through this little company and, and every day it's a small company. You know, every day I do like right. six jobs. Right. So, 
Um, but it's, you know, it just kind of went from there. And uh, when they wanted to start Teton, I was with a guy named Terry. He was president of the company. He's like, hey, I met this, uh, this Taiwanese girl. She's just cool. And she wants, she has some guitars. She wants to show us some guitars. He's like, well, let's go check them out. And this was at the NAMM show. And we go down and uh, meet her, and they were just fantastic. Yeah. I'm like, these are super nice. They only built classicals at the time. Oh. Like their whole thing was they 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 made classical guitars, like old school Spanish builders, wow. mm. like rope tied them off, you know, mm. and stuff like that. When mm. while the wood was, uh, the glue was drying and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So they made wonderful classical guitars. And we're like, let's do it. So Teton, the first four models were all classical guitars, okay. you know, and we okay. worked with them and modified them, you know, after getting in some samples and prototypes, we're like, these are great, but these are not what people in the U.S. are going to want, right. 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 you know, especially I'm like, and Teton is like uh, not traditional, anything classical. I was like, right. we're going to need to adjust neck sizes and and the shape of the neck and string spacing and all kinds of stuff, yeah. you know, is we're gonna have to make that work. And we've refined those necks over the years where classical players, I don't, unless they're beginners, they don't touch our classical guitars. Mm. Um, it's like hybrid right. guys, right. Uh, jazz guys love them. And that's what we knew going in. Like there's not going to be a guy who's like, I, I only play classical music and I'm going to right. play my Teton, right. you know, <laughs> it doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a different so, instrument almost really yeah. the way you've redesigned it. Yeah. Yeah. You've, re you've yeah. designed it for the marketplace, not for the traditional yeah. classical person. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from there, we uh, kind of were like, well, you guys make fantastic guitars. You need to learn how to make still string guitars. Mm -hmm. So we spent about a year going back and forth and working with them on, uh, specifications and stuff for the still string models. And, yeah. you know, one came in, they're like, we finished one and they sent it to us. And I'm like, this sounds amazing, but it feels like a classical guitar. <laughs> so we had, to, we had to just make adjustments. Right. And it's really refined itself over the years. You know, they've, uh, they've done a lot of research and we've, I've, you know, I've been over to the factory a few times and, right. While I'm there, it's awesome. We'll just, I'm like, oh, try doing this. So they'll go grab a neck and just start working, reworking the neck right wow. while I'm there. And I'll pick it up and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what we want. Wow. And so they like rechange all of their machinery when, yeah. when we get, they go into production again and they know, oh, we need to do it like this. So yeah. it's yeah. it's pretty cool. So are you the only company they produce for or do they produce for other companies? No, they do. Uh, not a lot because they're so small, but they do make for other companies. Yeah. Um, I know we're we're one of the only companies in the U.S. that get their guitars over here. Mm -hmm. A couple of the other companies that I know about, um, they uh, they produce for like Europe or for the oh, Asian okay. market, okay. and they just you know they're not sending them across the ocean; they're keeping them over there. Right. So. Which gives which gives your brand even more value, honestly. Um, yeah. And so that it's it's just it's so impressive to me that you, you 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 all have figured out a way to again give that boutique look, feel, sound at such an incredible price point and quality. I mean, I've got, gosh, I don't know how many hours I have on on mine, tens and tens and tens of thousands and you know, tens of thousands of miles, <laughs> just, and people, yeah. people don't understand when you're traveling and moving stuff around and things just get beat up and they get, and I've had other, other instruments and guitars in the past that they, you could put them mm -hmm. in the hardest case you've got and they still can't handle, um, the road. And that's, oh, yeah. that's another thing I've been very impressed with is little, especially when you're dealing with an acoustic guitar, little things like going up in elevation 3000 you know, feet or coming back down or going from humid to dry, uh, mm -hmm. climates. Those are all major oh, yeah. issues. And, um, and we've had instruments in the past that, uh, you know, my, my bass player had a stand up bass one time and granted it wasn't the best quality stand up bass, but 
we were kind of in one of those trips that it was a major elevation change and it snapped the neck and, oh. um, and he even had the strings loosened and everything. And so, wow. you know, people don't think about those things. And so it's even more impressive that you guys have created an instrument that, um, again, has that boutique quality, personal feel design and sound at that price point. So um, that's what's always excited me about, quote, kind of representing the brand. Um, I, I think of that. I should have worn my Teton Ranger t-shirt today. I didn't think about it. Um, <laughs> but that's what's always excited me about representing the brand and, and doing what I could to spread the message is because I knew I could count on it. Every single night I knew I could count on it. And, cool. Um, and, and little things from it holds its tune to I never break strings on it to, you know, all the stuff that matters, you know, it really matters. And so... Uh, so that's impressive. That's really, really impressive. What, um, what's next for the company? Is there some ingenuity taking place? Is there some maybe instrumentation line expansion? Um, what does all that, all that look like? Uh, yeah. So we, this, uh, last January at the NAM show, we introduced a couple of new things that I think will be fun and they still have, they both have a lot of potential to just kind of do this in their own areas. Right. So the first one was our, uh, we call it the student model. It was basically, uh, I said, I want this guitar made in the same factory. I want it to still play and sound like every other guitar that comes out of the factory, but I want it to be, uh, a hundred bucks below, anything else wow. Wow. that we're making <clears throat> so you know we really stripped it down um for all the stuff that can be stripped off that and some of it is like real time consuming because they do a lot by hand over there so right. if you think about the binding that goes around the edge of the instrument mm -hmm. um that's all placed by hand you know, you they place it in and then they tape it in place and then they put this in and tape it in place and put this in and tape it in place. So tons of handwork. So I was like, well, get rid of the binding. Like the right. binding, we can do something else to still have that structural integrity that we need that the binding provides. Mm -hmm. There's other things we can do there that's not as labor intensive. Right. So we did that. So we were able to bring the price down. I didn't quite hit the full... $100 like I wanted to, but I think we're like $75, $80 below the lowest model. Wow. Wow. And, uh, those things, uh, those guitars, like they basically, since we showed them, they've been gone right when they hit the door, they go right back out. Mm. Um, so that, that's been really cool to see. So we want to expand that more. So is that around? Right. A, are you around a two hundred MSRP price? Is that is that about where that's at? No, no. Those um, at the street price, which most shops are going to sell it at street price, we're uh, coming in between two fifty and three hundred. Okay, two fifty and three hundred. Okay. Yeah, which which is an know, amazing price. I mean, that's a crazy price. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, when you look at the statistics for guitar sales and stuff, uh, beginner guitars or at that 300 ceiling. Right. Right. So we want to definitely be below that, yeah. Yeah. that ceiling. So we can call it a student model and market it for that purpose. But that's just gone crazy. The other one was uh, one of those, I woke up in the middle of the night or maybe I was taking a shower or something and this thought popped in my head. So people are always like, you know, I go do clinics or I visit shops or whatever and people come up and talk to me and they'll show me either their guitars or they grab a guitar off the wall and they flip it around to the back and they're like, look at this wood. This wood is just beautiful. Yes. You know, yes. cause we use spalted maple and zero Cody and, uh, and, and flame maple and stuff like that. They're like, look at how beautiful this looks. And then they flip but it around. No one, front it. It's no one sees it. No one sees it. Yeah. <laughs> right. No one ever sees this, this awesome wood. And I'm like, well, you can't put, the awesome wood, if I took a solid piece of that awesome wood and put it on the front, it would sound terrible. Yes, you would hate how it sounded. Correct. So uh, one night I, you know, whatever situation I was in, I was like, why, why can't I do that, though? Um, so I, I said, you know, 
we're already making the guitar top. Right. So let's take the top. So the tops are made by taking a piece of wood and bookending it out. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear solid top guitar players, you know, it's not really solid. There's always a seam down the middle because you bookend it right. open. Right. Um, let's still do that. And then I want to find the thinnest veneer I can find mm. that won't show the grain from this top mm -hmm. that goes on top of that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, back in the old days, and some guitar makers still use it, and uh, you know, it, you can, whatever your feelings about it is, uh, protein glue mm. is made from animals. Mm -hmm. Um, when protein glue and wood, when protein glue binds pieces of wood together, it vibrates the exact same way the wood vibrates. That's why it's always been so popular is because the vibration properties, it allows the sound vibrations to move from one piece of wood to another piece of wood without changing it. Right, right, right. Um, I was like, I want that, but I don't want the protein glue. Because I don't want someone at some event to, you know, call me a baby uh, horse killer or right, <laughs> whatever. Right, right. So, um, so I was like, we have to find a synthetic version of that. Okay. Uh, glue. So uh, the factory went out and found different options that were available and tested out different things and sent me prototypes. So that's what we did. We took the top. We shaved it down just enough because we didn't want the uh, laminate piece, even though it's super, super thin. We didn't want it to like hang over the edge. Mm -hmm. Shaved it down just slightly, used this really, really lightweight synthetic protein glue to put that veneer on. So all of a sudden it kind of became one piece of wood, even though it was a laminate, you right, know? Right, right. Um, and... Then we had to. Then we had the tops that look like the back and the sides. Sure. Except I didn't put them on the back and sides because that, to me, that felt like way too much. Like right. spalted maple looks good in moderation, right. but when it's just all spalted maple, <laughs> right. Right. it's just it's too much. Right. So I was like, well, let's. And and it's a price thing too. If I put all of this expensive, yes. even for like little tiny thin sheets of this stuff, it's still expensive to use. Yes. If I keep putting that on everything, it's just making the price go up and up and up and up. And up. Uh, so I was like, let's just take uh, our basic 100 guitar and rework that to be able to put this top on it, keep the lower price, and uh, and uh, have a nice looking front of a guitar. So that was we released that at the Nam shows. Uh, it's just an exotic top guitar. We have it available in a Zira Cody wood, which uh, comes from Central America. Hmm. We have it in a spalted maple, which uh, a lot of spalted stuff comes out of the Northwest. So uh, we did that, and it was um, the goal was the sound again. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to come out there. There's so many terrible laminate top guitars that look really really nice Don't when you're looking at them mm -hmm. they sound terrible mm -hmm. uh they had to, that they had to do both or i wasn't going to release it right the factory again you know put up with my like middle of the night weird idea and they built a really cool uh prototype that had a lot of issues yeah. we worked through a few let levels of prototype and even now they're like for us to make those and have them be perfect, we can't make above this many right. in a production. Right. So um, that's what we did. We capped it off. We're like, all right, if that if per you know perfection's here, let's be safe. We're gonna cap it here. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we don't order any more than that. So yeah. but those um, those were like super slow right after Nam show and then weirdness happened, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People have finally discovered them like I I'm seeing them ship out, you know, whenever I go down into the shipping department or the QC department or the setup area, like those are there now. People finally discovered them. And right. so that's cool to see. Yeah. yeah. 
they are beautiful. I've uh, I've seen them on the website and stuff, and they're they're really really cool. So yeah. So nice job, nice job. Well, yeah. Thank you. Is that one going to come with the armrest? Uh, I I don't know yet. Yeah. Um. Production wise, I. That'd be interesting. We might have to we might have to try try a prototype and see how it holds up. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, we could only use certain woods. Right. We did find that out because we tried it on, um, you know, because really for us, we use three tops, mahogany, spruce, and cedar. Mm -hmm. We tried it on all of those, and it only worked on spruce. And then even the woods that we're putting, the exotic woods we were putting on top, some were working great, and other ones were not, not working so at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really... Um, I don't know. I'll tell them to just build me one. I'm yeah. like, just take the model, take what we're doing over here on this one, and take what we're doing on this one, and put, put them together. together and send me one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mitch said he needs one. Put it together. Let's yeah. see what happens. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That is. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so, as far as the line of instruments, we have um, the the acoustics, the classicals, um, some electrics, a few electric guitars, correct, a few uh -huh. bass guitars, um, and then ukuleles. Uh -huh. Are there any bases? Yeah, bases are only, only acoustic bases. Only acoustic bases. Okay, that's right. Yeah. And then ukuleles, yeah. right? Yes. Am I missing anything? Uh, no. I mean, we have accessory items. Right, sure. sure. Um, but, I mean, as far as the, the big stuff, that's that's everything. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, ben, this has been fun, man. This has been, yeah. we, we nerded out more than I thought we might, but I kind of expected <laughs> well, that a little bit and I'm good with it. Um, I know specifically of a few listeners that um, are going to really dig this episode. Um, a couple of them kind of try their hand in hobby guitar making. And so um, they're cool. really going to nerd out on this. So, uh, so yeah, this has been great. Um, how, how's the, the company's doing, doing well, kind of, we kind of talked about scheduling wise by nature. You guys were kind of ready to take this on. Everything's taking off again and moving forward. And yeah. Um, luckily where we're at in Idaho, we haven't had, um, the amount of cases and right. stuff like that, that we've been seeing, uh, like the County, I live outside of town about 20 miles. So the County I live in, we've had like five confirmed cases yeah. in two months and where uh, the county idaho falls is in has had maybe 40 yeah. in two months so uh, it's been a it's been different uh our business even though we had a statewide lockdown um our business was able to stay open for shipping products right Right. Um, because of the spacing we were allowed to have, like I worked the whole time, um, you know, and it was at the office and there was no one near me and the people in shipping, they like, you know, the warehouse guys had the whole warehouse, you know, and they had their little areas and the shipping guys had their areas yeah. and everyone was apart from each other. And so we were able to keep things rolling. Good. Um, we rotated shifts a little bit, you know, reduced, um, uh, time people were able to come in and things like that so we made it work and and now it's kind of just you know up and running like normal uh we we still run a couple of the teams still do quite a bit as far as uh who's in the office what days or what times and stuff like that but that's just because they're kind of it's harder for them to space out yeah, yeah. um so, uh, but it's, it's been okay. Um, you know, like a lot of places there was, uh, a lot of worry, you know, mm -hmm. how long is this going to last? What's it going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, especially for us, we, uh, we just really work with independent music stores all over the country. Mm -hmm. You know, how many of those are coming back after this? We don't know. Like we're still, we're getting calls, more and more calls every day. Hey, I'm opening up. I need such and such. Or next week we're opening and we need to get our order coming in and stuff. So we're getting a lot of calls. You know, if you look at our daily numbers, you know, it was like, uh, I don't know where my hand shows up in the screen. It was like, <laughs> oh, you know, we're growing and then nothing, you know. And then it's like, oh, we're every day it's getting a little bit better. Right, right. Um, so, 
but even during the uh, slow times, like dealers were really uh, inventive on what they were doing. Like we just were like, hey, um, we can drop ship direct to customers. So dealers, if they sold stuff on their website and didn't have it in their store, they could we would send it out to them. Um, if customers called them looking for stuff, you know, they could, they're offering, uh, delivery. Uh, they were taking guitars out to people. Like I had a guy pick up a guitar. He called me, he was in Colorado. He's like, I, I found a guitar. I knew what it was the guitar I needed. I called around to like seven shops. Finally, this one shop is like, I'll drive it to you. And he's like, he was like an hour and a half away from me. Wow. And the guy brought me the guitar and you know, we had some hand sanitizer and some wipes and we right. cleaned everything off and he handed right. it to me and uh, drove back to his yeah. shop to wait for someone else to call for business. So uh, there's just lots of stuff like that going on. Just everyone doing what they could to uh, kind of keep the ball rolling. And I think it was really, uh, there's a lot of motivation in, in this industry, the music industry, because Music just is hope, and music yes. is life, and yes. music, there's so much positivity uh, in music that, uh, especially the store owners, if, yeah, they wanted to pay their bills, and yeah, they wanted to keep everything there when, when this got done, but they also knew in some ways they were essential, you know? Right. When you hear the, right. the essential businesses get to stay open, well, these guys didn't get to stay open. Like, uh, if you look at what Amazon did, uh, they kind of shut down everything that wasn't essential on their website, right? You know, and kind of pushed it into the background. Well, music products got pushed into the background during the during, you know, the six weeks or whatever it was. Um, so that's kind of that was reflected everywhere, you know. Right. Uh, but uh, music is essential. Like how we how we consume it and how we produce it and how we, all of that is super important to everyone's life. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, the store owners knew that like guys were going to be looking, Hey, they're hanging out at home. What are they going to do? They're going to restring their guitars. So make sure you have some strings sitting around that if someone calls, you can drop them off in their mailbox or whatever, you know, cause they're going to want to have that in their life still. So, um, that was really cool to see, uh, and hear some of those stories because that was, that was, uh, people still needing that connection. Right. Um, and music is such, you think about how music works. It's a group of people coming together, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this is always true. I'm going to say good music <laughs> is people coming together <laughs> and, and producing something together as a group and then taking, turning around and there's a bigger group mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. comes together to experience that moment, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, that was just, uh, everyone who's kind of involved in the music industry knew how important that was. And you saw, you know, artists were doing a lot of stuff, um, you know, on their couches at home, um, making sure people still had access to that experience, even though it was different, you know, you're looking right. through this little two dimensional screen, right? Uh, there were still the connections being made. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it was really even impressive how many major artists, um, were willing mm -hmm. to step into that vulnerability and do some really cool stuff. Um, and yeah. so, uh, so yeah, it's, it's been interesting. Well, I, then again, this has been, uh, incredible, man. Um, thank you for being at the forefront of innovation and and trying to put a product out that people can value and, and find some some healing and some, you know, sensitivity in. And music is definitely that, whether you're listening or playing or creating or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, we're going to start wrapping it up, man. This has been a great conversation. I have something I do with all of my guests at the end of the show. Okay. So it's uh, five quick questions. You can only give one word answers. 
and uh, kind of a speed round type of a thing. By the way, okay. no one ever uh, obeys my one word answers <laughs> and I don't care. So <laughs> I'm doing, I'm going to do it. We have a goal. Um, right. Regarding books, do you prefer digital or paper? Paper. Coffee or tea? Neither. Do you want to expound? <laughs> <You're doing it. laughs> uh, what's one guilty pleasure you have in life? Uh, cake. Nice. Uh, one thing you can't live without? Running. Nice. And your favorite season of the year? Summer. I guess you guys kind of skipped spring, so I guess you're choosing between three <laughs> or two, yeah. winter and summer. <laughs> yep. So, uh, Ben, this has been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for taking time. Uh, it's been my honor Thanks, to visit Mitch. with you and for you to share your knowledge. Um, brothers and sisters, make sure you follow Teton Guitars on Instagram, at Teton Guitars. They're very active on there, whether it's announcing new product or supporting artists. That's, that's what I love about this company, really, probably out of, out of any of the companies I've had a relationship with over the years, the way you guys support the artists and are actively involved in that is incredible. So um, I, I love that about Teton Guitars. So um, Ben, I have one more question. I know um, oftentimes Teton Guitars are not found in traditional larger kind of big box music stores. What is the best way for someone yeah. to find maybe a place close to them that has a, a Teton on the shelf? Uh, we have a dealer locator on our website okay. and that's, I'm, I'm trying to be better at keeping that up to date. Uh, cause we do get a, we do add dealers to it a lot. Right. Um, kind of like a few every week, it seems like. So that is where dealers are. I try and, I try and keep it up to date. So, you know, as stores go out of business or, you know, someone moves away from the line, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep take them off. So Perfect. it's a pretty good representation um, and give of us, where they can find stuff. Give us the website again. Tetonguitars.com. Perfect. Tetonguitars.com. Awesome. So if you're interested yeah. more in Teton uh, friends and you want to, if you're a musician or a beginner and you want to learn how to play the guitar, this is a great guitar. Whether you're a veteran or a beginner, this is going to be a great investment. So please go check them out. Uh, make sure you follow us on social media at mgray media g r a y that's any any social media platform subscribe to our youtube channel mitch gray media and make sure you subscribe to the podcast anywhere you listen to the show the mitch gray show uh ben if you'll hang on the line we'll talk for a few minutes after we get done recording brothers and sisters i hope you are safe and well i hope you've enjoyed this episode of the mitch gray show and we look forward to talking to you again soon